I suppose some of the most remarkable words we find in the New Testament are found in Colossians chapter 3. And there we read in verse 2, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then you also will appear with him in glory. You died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. The remarkable story of James Calvert and his dear wife, Mary. He was actually born on my birthday, January 3rd, but in 1813. And Calvert was raised on a farm. His dad was a tenant farmer, uh, but he had early training as a printer and a bookbinder, skills that he used later in his missionary endeavors. And he, although raised uh, Anglican, his parents were Anglican, uh, he was attracted to the gospel outreach of the Wesleyans, and soon he began to preach regularly, sometimes in the open air, wherever he had opportunity. Well, eventually he and his wife, actually they were married on March 22 of 1838, and they left for the mission field in April, the very next month. Traveling by ship, they didn't get to the islands of Fiji until August. Now, at that time, Fiji was renowned as the graveyard of white men. The Fijians were cannibals. And in fact, one of the first tasks the Calverts had when they arrived in Fiji was to bury the remains of 80 people who had been cannibalized at a feast that was held by the Fijians. In actual fact, the first missionaries that came to Fiji were actually Tahitian men. Some Fijians had traveled to Tahiti. They'd heard the gospel there, and they asked that some might come. And so these men had gone, had been very poorly treated, ended up going to another little island where in the islands of Fiji, where the first little Christian church was started. But there were some fierce warlords there that uh, ruled with fear and with a violence. And the islands were renowned as the place where they loved to cannibalize missionaries and sailors. And uh, so anyway, the Calverts had made their way there, these newlyweds. They'd just been married a month when they left, and here they were arriving. And the captain of the ship pled with them and said, please don't, don't disembark. At my own expense, I will take you back to England because you're going to die here. And James Calvert said, oh, we're not going to die here. Well, how can you be so sure? Well, he said, we died before we ever left England. And, you know, this principle that we have died and our life is hidden with Christ in God is not merely some sort of psychological thing. It's real. In other words, the Christian believes that they have no life of their own. I was born dead. I was stillborn. I had no life. And Christ came to me and not only gave his life for me at Calvary to pay the penalty of my sin, but then when I received him, he gave his life to me. And Paul could say, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And so, the life that I have is not my life, it's his life. As far as I'm concerned, I'm dead. But Christ lives in me. My life is hidden with Christ in God. And so these missionaries arrived in Fiji and ended up in the midst of all of these, these battles, these wars that were being fought in these horrible conditions, and yet they went on living for Christ, and others arrived, and slowly but surely, people turned to the Lord. 
Today in Fiji, I understand the highest church attendance of any place in the world. Over 60, 63% of the population claim to be Christians. But it was not an easy thing. And when you realize this commitment they had to say, look, we left our lives, so to speak. We don't think about the things that are on the earth. We have set our mind on things above. I remember reading about Alexander Solzhenitsyn and how he spent time in the gulag, in the Russian prison system. And uh, he said the only way you could survive is if you died before you went in there. Because they would, they would say, we'll do this to your wife and your children. He said, you just had to be dead so that there was no claim that they could make upon you. There was no manipulation that would work. They had no point of leverage because you had said and taken it upon yourself that you had already died. Now, Christian, the world is getting rough and rougher for the believer in this part of the world, not only in, in the rest of the world. And so Christians uh, who are airline pilots or who are in business or whatever it might be, school teachers, people in the medical field, there are growing moral crises where we are being called upon to sublimate our conscience and to uh, do the things that the woke world thinks have to be done. And we're going to have to stand up for Jesus. And we're going to have to take this stand and say, wait a minute, I set my mind on things above. In other words, I think the way God thinks. I don't think the way the world thinks. And I have died to this world. The hymn writer says, content to let the world go by, to know no gain nor loss, my sinful self, my only shame, my glory, all the cross. This has to be the tactic of a believer in a hostile world. We have to lay claim to this idea that we've taken a good hard look at the world and we're not impressed. There's nothing here that interests us. The whole world lies in the lap of the wicked one. And there's nothing here worth salvaging. The world is condemned already. It's going to be burned. And God has called us away from it. So that even though physically we're still down here, as the Lord Jesus explained in John 17, we actually are people who are sitting with Christ in the heavenlies. And this world is alien to us. We have been sent into the world. We were born in heaven, and we've been sent in behind enemy lines to plead with people to leave this world system before it's destroyed and to join us in this new society composed of people whose lives are hidden with Christ in God. It is the only safe place to be. So may God help us to stand with John Calvert and his new bride, Mary, in the face of this horrendous scene in Fiji, and to say with confidence, we're not going to die here. We died before we ever left home. We have made a conscious choice to be crucified with Christ, to stand with that, to agree with that, that the old life is gone and our new life is hidden with Christ in God.